Dense fog continues to form across Connecticut. Visibility down to about a quarter of a mile in Willimantic, down to a mile in Putnam. Look at this, along 84, anywhere from a half mile to an eighth of a mile in Tolland. Along 91, around a quarter mile visibility of the whole way. And we're beginning to see visibility drop along Route 8 and Route 7, too. Dense fog advisories now expanded to include most of Connecticut. These go through late morning tomorrow. Here's a picture that Brad sent in uh, from Essex of fog forming in the Connecticut River Valley. And you can see how shallow this cloud layer is. Here's the land right here. The cloud layer itself, not much above that, but that is the dense fog that we are dealing with right now. Also cool that you can see uh, the moon here reflected off of a very still Connecticut River. It is very still outside tonight. A live look in our ICAM in Rocky Hill showing how dense the fog is. We can barely make uh, really anything out, just the lights. Now in Old Saybrook, things have actually improved a bit. Not quite as foggy as it once was. And here's a really, really interesting shot here on our ICAM in stores. Uh, we're actually above the fog layer, so we can see that fog has settled in to the Yukon campus, but again, showing just how shallow that fog layer really is. But this is what causes problems to travel. We've gone ahead and issued a first alert. Fog is widespread at this point, very dense in spots. This goes through tomorrow morning. This could have impacts on people on the roads and possibly even air travel, depending on how dense the fog is. And given that temperatures in some towns have approached the freezing mark, everyone's still above freezing, but gotten a bit closer. There could be some uh, isolated slick spots that develop, especially in elevated surfaces like bridges or decks. So travel with caution for the next, say, 12 hours. We should see improvements through the morning, and uh, Lauren will be here to walk you through all that. Our network or neighborhood weather station shows 41 in Kent right now, 39 in stores, 36 in Bristol, 40 in New London. And notice that temperatures have reached the, uh, the dew points. And temperatures tonight will generally be in the 30s inland, low 40s along the shoreline. And we could see temperatures fluctuate a degree or two either way. Again, we're expecting most towns to stay above the freezing mark. But if a couple of spots can drop to freezing, there may be a little bit of black ice that develops. The highest risk will be across northeastern and northwestern Connecticut. Tomorrow, we expect the fog to continue through at least 10 o'clock and then we start to see improvements as the day goes on but even then we're still dealing with mostly cloudy skies perhaps even overcast skies first lord future cast showing high pressure anchored to our east tomorrow helping to keep wind more of a easterly direction and then by Wednesday, we start to see our cold front approach from the west. Along this, a second area of low pressure develops, and that is going to be the driving force of rain across the state Wednesday. Rain showers develop Wednesday morning with steadier and heavier rain Wednesday evening and Wednesday night. And this, again, could have some impacts on travel for anybody who is planning to return to Connecticut or leave Connecticut on Wednesday. Well, about a half inch to an inch of rain likely uh, out of this storm. Good news about this, though, is that you may not be reaching for the chapstick quite as much. All of this moisture in the air, not very staticky, even heading into the weekend when drier and cooler air returns. And tomorrow, we're expecting highs to be in the 40s inland, 50s along the shoreline. On the first Lord seven-day forecast, morning fog is the thing to watch tomorrow. Rain returns Wednesday with lingering morning rain on Thursday. By Friday, some isolated rain showers still possible. We're in the 50s both Wednesday and Thursday, unseasonably warm as our average high temperature this time of year, upper 30s. Uh, by Friday, again, Again, isolated rain showers in the 40s and then Saturday into the holiday weekend, we are dry. So far this month, we've picked up over six inches of rain for the Hartford area. We're expecting to add about a half inch, maybe an inch to that, which will put us in the top 10 wettest Decembers. So when we end off the year on 2023, uh, it certainly was a wet year, but Dylan, thankfully, New Year's Eve looking dry, temps in the 30s, and uh, 2024 starts off bright with highs in the 40s.